Thank you, Pam. Awesome. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Morning is broken. Uh, thank you for that. And just really quick before we start, I, 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 thought I had two, and then I'm standing back there waiting patiently for, for Pam to finish. And I get to look at this. And it just sort of reminded me a little bit of how I sort of get used to having my spouse around. And to me, I think she's a very beautiful woman, and she's very loving and caring. And uh, when she's not around, that's when you go, whoa, wait a second. So I was standing back there facing the church, and pair of girls, thank you so much for lighting the candles, because we have a beautiful church. I mean, it's beautiful, and those candles lit make it just really, really nice. So thank you for that. Uh, but I hope you don't get used to how beautiful this church is. I hope you're always, <gasps> but just remember, it's still a building, okay? And God is in this building, but God is also wherever you are, too, his spirit living inside of you. Just real quick, um, you'll notice that in front of you, you see those red things? Let me tell you what they're called. They're called hymnals, okay? We used to have them a while ago. Um, they're back in the pews. Feel free to use them. Um, and I will try to remember to also mention the number so you don't always have to look at the bulletin too. You can use a couple of things. Um, slowly, slowly getting back to, I don't want to say normal because I don't know if that's what it's going to be but it will be what it will be. It might look a little different. It will look different. We have two cameras in the, in the church where a year ago we didn't have those. And so what a gift those are. Um, it sort of reminded me, I got here first type of thing. Uh, Roger, I think was like, like musical chairs. He had no place to sit in the narthex because he got there third and the other two chairs were occupied. It was like, ah. Oh. Uh, the reason being is Tanya and, and Melody did all that, from what I know, from what I understand. Um, if someone, if we actually need four, they don't even have to be strong, but four people to help us with the couches, they, the problem is they don't fit through the door. You sort of have to like jury rig it a little bit. You have to not bend them, but you have to sort of before they can come out. I don't think they're all that heavy. They're cumbersome. They're awkward for one person. I don't know how you lift up a couch with one person, but you know, before you leave here tonight, if you could grab a buddy um, and you know, so Roger has a place to sit, please. All right. And then the last thing, just to call your attention, I will call your attention to it too, is after Gerlene reads today, um, I am staying in the Gospel of Mark, where the lectionary says, go to John and talk about the feeding of 5,000. I'm going to stay in Mark since we're, we're, we're in Mark. We will move to John next week but I think it's very important, at least for me personally, to, to prepare a message to, to talk about that. So you could, when we get to Mark, when we get to my spot, when I read the gospel, just put your sheet down, it doesn't match. You'll hear some of the familiar story, it's very familiar, there are some things, but John tells it just in a little bit different way. All right. How about if we rise, if you're able, and... Uh, we will worship our Lord today. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sins, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Oh, is that great news? God of all mercy and consolation, come to help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God. 
and one another. Gracious God, have, have mercy, mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with the power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Amen. Please stand if you're able. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the community of the Holy Spirit be with you always. And also with you. for peace in the world, for the health of the church, for the unity of all, for this holy house, for your holy house, for all who worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. that we may live out your impassioned response to the hungry and the poor, that we may live out truth and justice and grace. Let us pray to the Lord. for peace in our hearts, for peace in our homes, for friends and family, for life and for love, for our work and our play, let us pray to the Lord. For your spirit to guide, that you center our lives in the water and the word, that you nourish our souls with your body and blood, let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray the prayer of the day together. Gracious, Gracious God, God, you, you have, have placed within, within our hearts, hearts of all your children, children a longing for your word and a and hunger for, for your truth. truth. Grant, Grant that we may we know your son to be the true bread of heaven and share this bread with all the world through Jesus Christ, Christ our, our Savior and Lord. And Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. The first reading is from the book of 2 Kings, the fourth chapter. A man came from Baal, Shalisha, bringing food from the first fruits to Elisha, 
the man of God, 20 loaves of barley and fresh ears of grain in his sack. Elisha said, Give it to the people and let them eat. But his servant said, How can I set this before a hundred people? So he repeated, Give it to the people and let them eat. For thus says the Lord, They shall eat and have some left. He set it before them. They ate and had some left, according to the word of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please read responsively from Psalm 145. All your works shall praise you, O Lord, and your faithful ones shall bless you. They shall shall tell tell of the glory glory of your kingdom kingdom and and speak speak of your power. That all people may know of your power and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Your dominions endure throughout all ages. You, Lord, are faithful in all your words and loving in all your works. The Lord upholds all all those who fall and lifts up those who are bowed down. The eyes of all wait upon you, O Lord, and you give them their food in due seasons. You open wide your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. You are are righteous righteous in all your ways and and loving loving in all all your works. You are near to all who call upon you, to all who call upon you faithfully. The second reading is from Paul's letter to the church in Ephesus, the third chapter. For this reason I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. I pray that, according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through his spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Is it Callie? Can I borrow you for a second? Could you bring your dad up here? Can I borrow you for a second here? Help me with your name. Jessica? Jessica? Okay. All right. Um, if you would, how about, you're, you're fine right there. How about if we just sort of take that and sort of fold it over if we could and have your dad help you up right here, please, okay? Can you stand up there? All right, good. All right. Tape measure. I think I know how to work it. All right. Um, Could you help here? I mean, you had a hard reading, Gerlene. The first reading, I'm so glad you read it. It's, it's, It's my mistake, too. I mean... My wife gave me a choice on our so- child's second name. I didn't like th- her first choice, so I picked Kayla. Okay? Big mistake when you have a Kira. Okay? Do you know where I'm going with that? That's just bad. And then they have cousin Kaya, and another cousin is a Colby, and he's a boy. But it was like, once that k sound? And so Elisha his mentor was Elijah. And so you have to be really, it's like, what? Who who are you talking about? But I want you to go to the second reading, okay? The second reading, and could you find verse 18? And I, I want you to all have a picture of this. And this is going to be really, really, not even close, but this is the best this human can do, okay? What does it say there? 18B, do you see that? 
verse 18 says, I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth. Okay, so, so the, the uh, Apostle Paul, who wants us to, to have, this, have this knowledge that all the saints have, okay, on, on the length, right? So why don't you go that way? I don't know how far we will go, but be careful. You're probably, we're going to run out soon. Oh, we ran out. Sorry. Come back just about six inches there. There you go. Okay? So picture this. Picture this. This is what Paul wants you to imagine. And this is just like infinite. He really is like, wait, we can't even me measure how much God loves us. But this is the best we can do. Okay? Now, you can do one of those silly tricks to get back at a person by just letting it go and it winds up and smacks me in the head. How about if you just stay put and you can let go and I'll be very careful with bringing it up. Okay. Um, how about if you, can you step off and step up? Okay. How about, I'm gonna hold this. Okay, could you step down for a second? Could you grab that? And I'm gonna hold this and go, I want you to reach as high as you can. Okay? Stay right there. Now, do you, do you see how, and what is this? This is what? How much he, what? Loves us. Okay? This is, this is Pastor Tom's, what's that? To know the love of Christ to that know the love of Christ. knowledge. Yes. And so, and he uses these terms. And every time he uses, and he uses these terms many times, length and breadth, depth, depth, and height. And so it's sort of like a 3D image for me. It's like a box. This is a pretty big box. And you know what? We're not even close. We're not even close to knowing how much Jesus loves us. But maybe we can picture it just a little bit. Maybe instead of having a finite 25 foot you know, measuring you know, thing, we would have 100 or 200 or maybe infinite going that way. And instead of what? Go ahead, let me see, go reach up as high as you can. Let me see what we have here. We have like close to like six and a half feet. Maybe instead of six and a half feet, we have 10, 20, 100, infinite. What is this saying here? Jesus loves us beyond what we can ever, ever comprehend. Okay? But maybe you have a little visual with you now. You ready for the gospel acclamation? Thank you so much. Remember, please put your bulletins away. Keep them close. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When it grew late, his disciples came to him and said, this is a deserted place and the hour is now very late. Send them away so that they may go into the surrounding country and villages and buy something for themselves to eat. But he answered him, you give them something to eat. They said to him, are we, are we to go and buy 200 denarii, which is a day's work, 200 days work of bread and give it to them to eat? And he said to him, how many loaves have you? Go and see. 
And when they found out, they said, we have five loaves and two fishes. Then he ordered them to all, all the people to sit down in groups on the green grass. So they da- sat down in groups of hundreds and, f- and fifties. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to his disciples to set before the people. And he divided the two fish among them all. And all ate and were filled. And they took up 12 baskets full of broken pieces and of fish. Those who had eaten the loaves numbered 5,000 men. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to the Lord our God. You may be seated. Probably one of the toughest things to do is to come up with a sermon of what you've heard so many times before. How many times have you heard this story, the feeding of the 5,000? Probably a a, a lot. The feeding of 5,000 men, if if you read what the, uh, the gospel writer Mark wrote down. And so if you counted the, the women and the children within this group, commentators estimate that there would be somewhere between 15 and 20,000 people. Picture that on this hill or in Luke's version, it's in a valley. Picture that. And what do they have? Five loaves and two fish. Sort of hard to believe in this day. Have we seen anything like it in our time? I'm not questioning if it happened. Please don't, don't make, you know, don't say, oh, pastor doesn't believe it happens. I, I really do. I firmly believe that it does. It's the only miracle that was reported by all four gospel writers. The only one of all of Jesus' miracles. But has it happened? What I'm questioning is, has it happened today? Can we relate to it? Because I always try to go like a so what, you know, so what can we picture this? Five loaves, two fish, pretty scarce resources. And somehow, some way, God makes it enough. Hmm. Maybe part of the problem with this story is that we have our glasses, our 2021 earthly glasses on, our lenses. And I think maybe more than any other miracle that Jesus did, the participants, the people that were there 2,000 years ago, would definitely be drawn to the Old Testament stories of Moses and Elisha. Chapter 16 in the book of Exodus has God raining down manna and quail for the, the Israelites. And these, this manna and quail will sustain them all through their years of journey in the desert. And then in our first reading that Gurleen uh, read today, there was what? A hundred men, okay? And uh, the the prophet had 20 loaves of barley. And, you know, I think that's important there. Uh, 20 loaves of barley. See, barley was a bread of the poor people. That was the grain of the poor people. And that's all they had. And here, after taking that and looking at that, what they were able to do, which was common in this story that we read today, that they had stuff left over, right? Didn't they gather stuff here? Wow. And the other thing that was in common by Elisha was that there was resistance. As Jesus met resistance through his disciples, saying, how are we supposed to do that? Are we going to, supposed to spend 200 working wages to just get bread for the people? And it's interesting. I mean, do you ever go bread, buy bread, you know, at late at night? When does bread, be, you know, made? It's made in the morning. And they only make a certain amount of it. So if you want fresh bread, you go get it in the morning, right? If you get it in the evening, you're going like, hmm, you might not have any bread. 
unless if they made too much and then you can go to the discounted aisle, right? But chances are they're not going to have a, uh, that much for 20,000 people. Early Christians, and maybe even us today, we might be reminded about this Eucharistic meal. Because if you notice what Jesus says in this, he looks up to heaven, he blesses it and breaks the loaves of bread to be distributed. And I hope, I hope the words that I say up there are just not words that you hear every week. I hope you hear them. And it's sort of like an echo of what happened in this feeding here. I am definitely not Jesus, but what I am doing is saying the words that Jesus said over 2,000 years ago. And I hope you find that this meal, this meal is very important. I hope it's important to you. Because in this meal, someone asks, well, what does it provide? And I like to, I would love to say everything. It really is the best answer that I can give you about this meal came from a two-year-old. And where I was uh, intern uh, last, or a couple years ago in Michigan, they allowed any age to receive communion. They trained him, them, but if there was a two-year-old who wanted communion because their family was eating communion, they, they were okay with that. And I had trouble with that. I'm going, oh, yeah, yeah, fourth grade. I thought fourth grade was like the magic day, you know, grade that we do communion and stuff like that. And my mentor came and said, here, come follow me, and gave a host to a two-year-old and said, what does this mean? And the boy said, Jesus loves me. All the arguments that I had were out the window and that they would continue to learn about this meal as they would get older and older. It doesn't mean the training has stopped, but how can, I, how can I express it any better? And I have words, I have a paragraph that this meal is, I'm just going to leave it at that. Jesus loves me. And you've heard this story before, uh, another one, I, I need to get more stories, I think, is when I, when I go visit the homebound, they really, I, I really do believe they just put up with me. They sit there and are very pleasant, they're very good at holding a conversation. I ask them questions, they ask me questions and stuff, stuff like that. But you know what? What they really want is this. That's what they really want. So they will put up with me until I say that magic sentence, would you like communion? Oh, yes. Oh, yes, that's what I've been putting up with you for the last half hour. I want this. I want the real presence of Jesus Christ because you know what? In my homebound, in my retirement area, in my rehab area, we don't get that. What we get is conversation. I might have family coming and visiting me. I might have physical therapists coming and talking to me, nurses and doctors and stuff like that. But we do not get a simple substance, bread and juice. So they too are longing what these 20,000 people were longing for too. And that was what Jesus Christ was offering in this banquet. And I'm, I'm, I'm drawn to two weeks ago when we talked about John the Baptist. And you know the story of that. We talked about that. You can read it because it's all part of the story. We're in chapter six still of Mark. We haven't left that. We haven't gone to like another gospel writer. That's why I'm staying here, even though the lectionary tells me to move on. Because Herod also had a banquet, didn't he? And he invited the in crowd, and he had his daughter dance for them, and then made a vow. 
So this meal of 5,000 or 15 or 20,000 is, is, is different than the meal, the banquet that Herod was offering, but still very, very important. And, and I wish I could say it. I probably did one time or the other, and who knows? Maybe you didn't like it. But Jesus does not want us to forget this meal. The meal that we're going to share here very shortly, Jesus does not want us to forget this. You will hear me say in the, in the bread and the, and the juice and the wine, it'll say, do this in memory of me. And you've heard me say that, that's not what the Greek is telling me to say. The Greek that was, uh, and the Arab, uh, Arabic that Jesus was saying really means do not forget this. But we softened it up quite a bit, do this in memory of me. And I love, I love one of my favorite, one of my favorite lines of the liturgy is after the meal. May the body and blood of Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Guys, no matter what height and depth and how long and wide, Jesus loves you. That's what it's saying there. So going back, have we seen this today? The feeding of this huge crowd with five loaves and two fish? Or is this really just a miracle that happened a long time ago that we struggle with? Mm, so what? It's a long time ago. My answer is yes. It happens all the time. It happens not just once today, but it usually happens many, many times in the day. Because if, if we don't focus on the numbers of this story, I don't think any of the gospel writers would care how many. 5,000 men, 20,000 people, who cares? Right? Some of you hosted parties before, and you know, when it gets up to what, a number? Any more than that, it's like, does it really matter? Right? If you host a party of 15 and five extra show up, does it really matter? I, I love families that have like all one gender of children. You know, they have seven girls or seven boys. And it's, they, I could just see the parents looking at each other and go, does it really matter? Let's try again. For those of you who want the, you know, the opposite gender, I mean, I, I, it, it, it doesn't matter after a while. Because what we need to remember, what the theme of this story is, what's important of this story is that Jesus shows compassion on them. That's where I stopped reading yes, last week. That's where our lectionaries took us, is that Jesus shows, sees, uh, sees the crowd and shows compassion on them because he claims that they're like sheep without a shepherd. And that, that is what moved him to do this miracle and I don't want you to miss that. I don't want you to think like this is a separate story. It's all one and the same. We've been in this story for the last, what, month? It is all happening the same. Jesus had compassion first. Had this feeling in his gut that something is wrong. And then he acts on it and feeds the many, many people. And I think this is what Mark wants us to get out of this story. I asked you last week, you know, let compassion start with us. How did it go? Did you have some opportunity this week to show compassion to someone else? And I'll tell you, it doesn't have to be feeding 20,000 people. I love the people who go, can I get the door for you? 
because they know that I, I, I struggle sometimes opening up doors, especially if they're heavy. This week, last week, Tuesday, our church council uh, was trying to figure out, you know, what this church will look like in the future. Will it be the same? It's possible, definitely. But it already is going to be different because of the cameras that we have, because of the sound system that we have. It is already different. All right? But in terms of what else do we offer? I mean, we, we, we offer both an indoor and outdoor service for the comfortability of our members. It may not be what you want, but other people, last Sunday, we couldn't put another car in the parking lot. It was that full. And what else is happening here? You know, we have people making calls and checking up on certain members of our congregation, so we're helping our congregation. We're not forgetting about them. And then I look at what we're doing as, as, as outdoor ministry or our, our ministry outside of this building. You heard me say we did not make one mask before the pandemic, not one that I'm aware of. We made thousands of them and gave them out free to the public. Quilts continued to be sewn. The blessing box continued to be stocked along with the addition of a refrigerator and socks. Ramps continued to be built. Did they make a ramp today in this heat? Greg, did they? Con ministry that continues to bring people to the church. And we started a furniture ministry downstairs where we give furniture out from what you, we collect. We give it to them free. This church has shown a lot of compassion to both our members and our community, and we will continue to do so. We still have a lot to figure out, just the nuts and the bolts of this church and how it will run. Gosh, there, there is countless things to do. There's countless things to, to look at. Could you look in front of you, please? Do you notice what's in your pew? One that, thing that you haven't seen in over a year? They're called hymnals. They're the red books. And again, you saw that the furniture back in the narthex, and hopefully, if we can get four people, we'll have that completed. I can make that, check that off my list, done. Just know that we're continuing to look at other things. I think for the first time, Marilyn, our, our person who sings, actually turned and faced you. That's a big thing. That's huge. Guys, just know that we love you when we're making these, these, these decisions. And I know it may not seem like it, but I'll tell you, very rarely do we ever make a decision with you singular in mind. Because what we have to do is make decisions with everyone in the church in mind. But let me tell you where, this, where I, myself, will make a stand. We will continue to proclaim the gospel. We'll, we'll proclaim it every week. And as my friend says, often in times of words, sometimes not. But we will always be a church that shows a kind, the kind of compassion that Jesus demonstrated to this crowd. St. Teresa of Avila states, Christ has no body on earth but ours today. No body on earth, no physical body except for ours. Our eyes through which Christ's compassion is to look out to the world. Christ looks through our eyes because there is no body of Christ, no physical being of Christ. That was 2,000 years ago. It's up to us now. And this will always be the twofold mission as long as I'm here. Love God, love neighbor. And this is how this miracle story happens, even today, on many, many times in the day. Please, do not get caught up in the numbers. Get caught up 
in the compassion of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Think about that. As we sing all the verses now, you can get that hymnal out or you can use your bulletin, number 674, let us, ta let us talents and tongues employ. Let us profess our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe, I believe in, God, in God, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe, I believe in, in Jesus, Jesus Christ, God's, God's only Son, Son, our Lord, who was conceived, conceived by the Holy Spirit, Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, Mary suffered under Pontius Pilate, Pilate was, was crucified, crucified, died, and was, and was buried. buried. He, he descended, descended to the dead. dead. On the third, third day, he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Rooted in Christ and sustained by the Spirit, we offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all creation. We pray for the church. Bless the ministries of our neighboring congregations. Empower churches throughout the world and encourage missionaries who accompany global neighbors. Kindle in us a spirit of collaboration that all people may know your loving works. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for creation. Send rain to lands experiencing drought and come to the aid of those enduring sweltering heat. Nurture wheat and barley crops grown for the nourishment of your people and conserve aquatic habitats and fish populations. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for those who govern. Cast out arrogance, selfless, selfishness, and corruption, and instruct those who lead to practice compassion and humility. Inspire them with a vision of the common good and a commitment to ensure that all who hunger are fed. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for those bowed down by heavy burdens, those who are unemployed or underemployed, those unable to find affordable housing, 
and those without health insurance. Console those who grieve, and hear the cries of those who call to you for healing. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for this assembly. Deepen our resolve to use what we have to serve those in need. When we worry that we do not have enough resources for ministry, assure us of your abundance. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Holy One, we give you thanks for those who celebrated a birthday this past week. We are grateful to be part of their life and ask your continued blessing upon Carolyn Kays, Seth Adams, Adam Barr, Brendan Beckendorf, Gloria Sampson, Leo Bruins, Austin Mueller, Wyatt Pratt, and Donna Ristow. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Living God, we also thank you for the gift of marriage. We thank you for blessing the wedding of Tim and Kathy Rickey, Steve and Betsy Ferguson, and Richard and Helen Petzing. Please continue to instill in them love for each other and love for you. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. Lord, we continue to pray like our second petition for those who are suffering drought, but now also who are suffering rain in those areas that now they're experiencing floods, not just in our country, but in, in, in the countries in our world. Please be with them. Please help them feel your presence. Please help this, the, the situation wherever it may be. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We lift these and all your prayers to you, O God, confident in the promise of your saving love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us offer each other a sign of God's peace. And if you're able. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Oh, it is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us a way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on, this, on earth, this church here, and the hosts of heavens, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks. He blessed it. He broke it. He gave it to his disciples to eat, saying, this is my body given for you. Do this in the memory of me. And in the same way, he took the cup. He blessed it. He gave it to his disciples to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. Our Father, Father, who who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy Thy kingdom kingdom come, come. thy Thy will will be be done on on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread bread. and And forgive us our trespasses trespasses, as we we forgive those those who trespass trespass against us. us. And And lead us not into temptation, temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and and the power and and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. seated. Love God, love your neighbor. This is an opportunity to do so. So when you dig out your host from the communion cup, I ask you to check on the people around you to make sure that they also have it. If you need a communion cup, we will get you one. you are ready, could you please hold it up? The body of Christ given for you, take and eat. The blood of Christ shed for you, take and drink. There's part of me that just wants to be quiet, but another part of me that you need to know this because I get to watch you. Most of you are watching me. You're missing out a lot. If you saw what I just saw, you had saw a very little but huge act of compassion just occurred. Compassion of Jesus Christ is alive in this building. And may the body and blood of Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. If you are able, please stand. We'll finish up with our closing prayer and our blessing, and we'll sing our final song. Let us pray. 
God of abundance, with this bread of life and cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ, making us with one with all your people. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please receive God's blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be, give you grace and mercy. And may the Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Amen. Our sending song, Rise, O Church, like Christ arisen. It's number 548. We will be singing verses 1, 3, and 4. Let's go in peace, show compassion, show Christ's compassion, and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. <laughs>